We're talking about the Swedish Christmas table. Hey, look at that. Uh, gives you about half a year to get things together, right? And look honestly, that. I was looking through this. I've been drinking this uh, smoothie made with chocolate whey powder that I got from the bulk okay. section at Savon. A while back. Um, I ran out of protein powder. Yeah, yeah. Now, how are you finding it? You look Terrible. <laughs> You looked a little meditative. It's so terrible. I managed to use it up because there wasn't that much of it. Yeah. But uh, I wouldn't recommend anybody ever buy it. Now, is it because it's uh, whey powder or chocolate, or is it just because of the brand, you think, or what? It's just bad. I think they have sweetener in it. Okay. Yeah, you don't, wouldn't like sweet necessarily. So there you go. Some people might. My smoothie sour cherry. Yeah, that's her. That when you say yours is, oh, in there, and then it's got sweet. It in. has the chocolate whey powder, but it, yeah, luckily yeah. I didn't put that much of it, so mm. it's still nice and sour. No, I don't see much evidence of chocolate. Mm. But anyway, mm. so James and I have been eating things lately that we probably shouldn't. Watermelon, maybe. Oh, we should be eating that. It's very healthy stuff. Well, we only eat it at, in the summer, and yeah. anyway. Mm -hmm. I, the only problem I might have with it is expense. That's full of all sorts of nutrients, right? Eh? Watermelon's so cheap. Is it? Well, there you go. Yeah. It's full of, surprisingly full of nutrients for something that's that delish, as my dad used to say. I'm still there. Um, it's shocking. Good tasting. But popcorn. We've been eating a lot of popcorn, but there's not much garbage there. Well, and like you, you've been giving me at least uh, coconut oil, olive oil. You know. Yeah. So I, you've got to be watching the fats, but the fats are good for me if they're good fats, right? Yeah. Well, I think I was craving it because we've been doing some serious hiking. Serious, serious carb burns. Yeah, and so when we get back, I think I'm craving the salt. I think that's what it is. The salt but maybe and the, the fat, too. A little bit of the carbs and maybe a little bit of the fat. There's not a lot of carbs there. No, but, it's mostly uh, fat mm -hmm. and salt. Yeah, you're saying it's like a handful of seeds. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, it's not like eating a potato. No. But, um, anyway, so I was reading the Swedish Christmas table. Mm. And it it's looks as like though it has all sorts of recipes for mm. not healthy things. Yeah, the kind um, of stuff James might like. A lot lots of sweets, of, right? Yes, right lots right of there. cookie sort of things yeah. and, and candies. And So if you want to um, to borrow a recipe from the library that will teach you how to make all sorts of things like fudge and different candies and stuff, then mm. you might want to borrow this book. So which library did this come There's, from? It looks like local Yokel Library, right? Yeah. Lethbridge? I don't know. So no? anyway... Okay. Um, all right, I forgot what I was going to say. Sorry. The Sometimes I make her lose the train of thought, but I'm just trying to get into the... That's okay. Things. So, oh, I remember what I was going to say. What I liked about this book is that it may seem odd, but, I mean, it's just Christmas table. It doesn't say necessarily that it's a recipe book. It includes a hundred plus recipes. Oh, it's but like it also decorations. Includes other, yes. Yeah. So... It, it has some things like how to make various um, bows or whatever and different things. Excuse me. That is really interesting. Um, or how, like a Japanese gift wrap uh, technique using fabric to wrap books. Or just interesting things. In the Swedish now, thing. That's uh, what okay. I was going to say. So... Um, I don't know what they were thinking. Mm. Maybe they were trying to say, look, we're really multicultural in Sweden, or whatever. I, I don't know. But the first recipe is chai, and there's hummus and all sorts of things like that. Most things aren't healthy at all, though. Um, but, and then, like I said, there's Japanese gift wrapping of books. And uh, so it's a little bit... It, it's a, it's an interesting art project. You can tell that these people are quite artsy and... These people, you're using the positive sense there, right? The, these, these people, right? The, 
I just said these people. I don't care I'm, about it like you do. Well, so, I, I don't care about it either. It's just people I talk Jens to tend to Linder care. Linder and Johanna Westman. Jens. Those were the people I was referring to. Jens Linder. The authors there. Yeah, exactly. of this book. Um, there's pictures of them in there. They're having a lot of fun. And um, boy, the flies really love your salmon. You'd better eat that. Because mm -hmm. they're just all over us. Yeah, I don't I know, think it's I over the watermelon. Oh, they'll I think be they over want you. Your... Well, they're heading over the watermelon. Okay. Um, would I recommend this book? I cannot. I cannot in good conscience recommend this book. Not even borrowing. Book because it's just full of treat food. Mm -hmm. And that's not really food. Yeah. But I suppose if you're going to only what? eat that way for Christmas, just for a treat, mm -hmm. then I suppose maybe. Have you ever looked at real Swedish food? What it's like? There is some gross meat stuff in there. Yeah, yeah. So I'm, it's shocking I'm when guessing you, that when that's you, authentic Swedish. Yeah, so I don't know how authentic this stuff is, but when you read books on like Swedish, how to learn Swedish for uh, tourists and stuff like that, they will have you know things for restaurants and so on and so forth. So theoretically, it's real Swedish food, and you're going, I'm staying home. Yeah. Okay, so Let's plan a trip to somewhere else. Not a real reflection on it, you know, like uh, people develop taste, you know, like eating turkeys is disgusting, eating chickens is disgusting, eating yeah, octopus but, is, yeah. is disgusting, cultural calamari, yeah, it's a cultural thing. Mm -hmm. Some people will adjust to this, some people, I like eating shrimp, it's disgusting, I hate it's eating disgusting. lobster, it's, just, it's disgusting, I don't see that there's that much difference, you just mm -hmm. get kind of like acclimated to one and obviously not to others. So they did have like there are a lot of fish dishes in Swedish fare and maybe more in the region. Right. Danish fare. And you're exposed to the ocean. But uh, yeah. But it did seem like the authors had some fun yeah. putting the book together. Mm -hmm. And if you're into finding uh, and land based in cultural appropriation, you know, with that Japanese boring and stuff like that, you might have a fun time. But mostly, I, I just, um, I put that on hold from the library a long time mm. ago because I wanted to figure out, well, what do they eat for Christmas in Sweden? And, and then, you're then out. I'm finding out, I don't know. Mm. Who knows? Anyway. Well. So you're recommending not even for them. That's not. No, not unless you really want a whole yeah, bunch of go. recipes for sweets. No, there you go, see. I'm not going to try any of the things out of there. I can't recommend it if I haven't tried it and I there don't know if it's good. See, there you go. I don't even know if the recipes work because I'm not going to try any of them because they're just a bunch of sweets and a whole bunch of neat things that yeah. I don't They should have called it the Swedish Christmas, you know? They should have. Only they had had James working with them. Yeah, that would have been a much better yeah. title. I don't know what they think of. Because they seem like art sort of people. Artsy type of people. Yeah. Well, you know, artsy people aren't that artful. The longer I live and hang with them, the more I Except so, for me. Well, see, you don't go around saying you're a painter. Because you're so no. much more. You don't go around saying you're a poet. Because you're so much more. I don't think yeah. you've ever described, heard me describe myself as a poet. I, I think I will say I write poetry. If I do say I'm a poet, it's a mistake. It's something that I don't have to say. Um, you know, so I'm getting tired of who I'm saying. I'm a dancer. I'm a painter. I'm a poet. And you'll see people claiming to be poets, and they don't. They've never. Maybe not written a word of poetry in their life, or line of poetry. It really comes down to that. I mean, a word. Hard to tell. You got to put other stuff with it. You know? How yes. you make the stuff, uh, you know, blend into the next uh, one. All right. So yesterday we were talking about David Suzuki, and we forgot we, to talk about the scientific method. Yeah, it's yes. kind of important. Because what David Suzuki was saying in the interview, and this was a while back that I heard it. Um, 
he was taught one thing that he mentioned was that in the 60s people used to respect sci scientists and doctors, doctors and how that's changed now mm -hmm. and um, how they used to trust them well I say that it is the fault of people who claim to be scientists and doctors today mm -hmm. because they have proven themselves not trustworthy. They are Especially not following GPs. the scientific method. Mm -hmm. And um, that I'm not saying all. Some are very trustworthy and some are following the scientific method. Um, but if you're not following the scientific method, how can you really call yourself a scientist? It seems pretty easy for them, but I don't understand. I think they'd die of embarrassment or something like that. Now, I found that when you start getting into the specialist stream in medicine, you start actually dealing with doctors that can help you out. The big trouble is getting into that stream. And I've dealt with enough GPs now so that you probably prefer to have a sampling of 30. But, you know, I think when you start getting around 11, you're maybe starting to get somewhere. And ultimately, you have to, you have to uh, make a judgment based on, you know, uh, initial findings. So, with me, it was 11 doctors. There you go, it's a 11. And that was the one that finally diagnosed me. This was after not nine years. So don't go quoting me saying, James was saying nine years. Eight could years have and ten forever, and a half months. Though. It could have, if I'd stayed because down in Lethbridge. we just happened upon, we went to, we went up north, mm -hmm. and it, we happened upon a doctor from South Africa. Mm -hmm. And that's who diagnosed James. That's who actually got him streamed towards the diagnosis or whatever. Seems to me our best doctors here are from South are Africa. Are from South Africa. Mm -hmm. And so he, I saw him afterwards. He was a GP, and he set me up um, my shoulder. I needed to go to an orthopedic surgeon. The so only doctor that's given an any sort surgeon. of satisfaction. And then I came here. Because I I'd moved right, so I got the referral to the orthopedic su surgeon Way up there, north. Yep. and I should have just went. I should have just okay. Well, when they called, I should have said, I guess we're mm -hmm. heading up north again to because anyway. I thought, well, what? Um, it shouldn't be that hard for me to get a referral here because I've already been referred. <laughs> nope, still haven't no went way. to an orthopedic. No Couldn't surgeon. use that it's been refer almost referral. Almost a decade, hasn't it? It would be yeah. because uh, I've so been... I still haven't received proper treatment for my shoulder. Mm -hmm. So why? Why should I trust doctors after GPs like, all they've done is abuse horrible. me? Yep. Except for the one from South Africa. Yep. He was actually doing the job. So here's the deal. Now this is a joke now. What we've done is we've given you something like the statistics. Now I'm going to make the joke, okay? Mm. It doesn't do to make jokes about things and, you know, start mm -hmm. threads. Did, did not, did, did not, and stuff like that on the Internet. Now we've earned the right. By dealing with these guys and now telling you about what, uh, we've, uh, what we've had to deal with, uh, you know, the doctors, uh, the 10 doctors I saw before the 11th were letting me die. When the, when the uh, 11th referred me to an internist, the internist was saying, you know, after uh, two weeks of testing, you have 18 months to live. Mm -hmm. That's terminal, as far as I'm concerned. And that is with chemo, right? So, uh, you know, these bozos, I'm not even going to say these people, these bozos uh, earning huge coin, one was retired, but I, I won't get into it because uh, you know. he decided he was going to diagnose. I used to play soccer with him. He said, 
you know, I was taking a, a Japanese history course. And he looked at me and said, you should lose some weight. I went, wow, that's interesting. Every time I look in a mirror, I can kind of come up with that diagnosis. Now, understand, you can look at me now. And I wasn't, you know, I, I still, at that point in time, I could play soccer with kids who were literally young enough to be my kids. And I'd run yeah. circles around them, okay? So I, I said, I, I'll, try, I'll try him out. I'll try him out. He, you know, it's not as, you know, I don't believe people should go around with retired doctors and say, hey, hey, man, can you help me out here? So, but, he, you know, he'd gone out of his way, kind of like. Mm. He's a little bit that way. No, the worst was going to emergency mm. here mm. because you were having back spasms. Mm. And then the guy um, gave you a, let's say, it wasn't really a referral or whatever, but mm. gave you a card to go to a physiotherapist. And then the physiotherapist was giving you treatment. You're having to pay for that. Mm. And um, then he says, well, next time take painkillers so we can uh, do some further adjustments. I mentioned to that to my doctor. And it's like, wow, it's a lucky thing that James is still walking. Exactly right. Because he was, I, every manipulation pretty well. He was in that. Like, uh, uh, you know, uh, yeah. as I was in the third stage of multiple myeloma, bone marrow. Mm-hmm. And he was doing some chiropractic kind of moves. It was, he was very lucky. Like he was leaning on my rib cage. I ran into one guy. That's how they found out he had multiple myeloma. He's playing golf. Think about someone leaning on your rib cage and someone playing golf and think what's going to apply more pressure. It might be golf. You're putting a lot of torque on your back. But just think about it. And I could tell this guy was embarrassed. You know, you could hear people in neighboring kind of not cubicles but behind curtain you practically see the curtains stirring that they wanted to go they're saying what are they doing to people here right <laughs> and so that's what it was it's yeah embarrassing. so he said next time get on a painkiller and you know i mentioned this to my doctor two days ago she's a specialist and didn't say much but you could see she was scandalized mm -hmm. you know and all I said, I was talking about pain, being valuable. Pain saved me from a wheelchair there. Mm -hmm. uh, pain is good. Agony isn't. I saved myself from agony by listening to my pain. Or the pain this idiot was visiting on me. Sure. And I just this said, no life. way. And Pauline wasn't feeling my pain, so she and she was worried about me. She's well, saying, you know, we've got to try something. You know, she well, was, I yeah. tend to follow the mm -hmm. doctor's mm -hmm. advice too mm -hmm. much, and so I don't know if I do anymore. More like I used mm -hmm. to just, I used to obey all all. The, I used to be much more submissive mm -hmm. than I and am. And now, when you deal with them, because they but, messed um, you over. Yeah, they've just messed me over so much, and then after this thing with James, I'm just, I, I'm less willing to be submissive. Admit it, you're, you're flabbergasted at how incompetent GPs are. GP is an, well, an, an initialism for general practitioner, but it's also an abbreviation. GMP is the full no, abbreviation, we were talk and about, that's general malpractitioner. We were that's nine talk tenths about the of GPs. Method. Okay, let's talk that's about. That's what we were going to talk. Well, about. Well, we talked about medicine. Here's the deal. When I go into any science, I can find something wrong with the leading. with the leading theory. And biology I can find it. Darwinism. Mutation. Punctuated equilibrium. I don't have much problem. But Darwin didn't foresee mutation. And uh, so he's talking about um, survival of the fittest. And um, natural selection and stuff like that. Natural selection is a subtractive process you can't get additive from subtractive natural selection does not drive evolution it just drives extinction you can't get evolution from extinction when you've got something like mutate I, I, I had a little 
it wasn't a showdown. It was just with a guy, a biology guy walking out. I was very nice to him. You know, I was saying, what is mutation? Is it not? Is it not? Um, uh, n not so much Lysenkoism, but um, uh, acquired characteristics. No, no, no. It's not a, like acquired characteristics the way they were first seen. You can't cut off dogs' tails generation after generation, as far as I can see, and end up with tailless dogs. But the, the characteristics are acquired at the genetic level. Darwin didn't know about genes. Men Mendel was probably working on this stuff at that point in time. It wasn't discovered until, his work wasn't rediscovered or discovered until 1900, I think. He's off somewhere in a monastery or something like that. Darwin is a dead end. People were thinking in terms of evolution. Other people, Wallace is a dead end too. Other people were talking about it, so he's not the guy who came up with the idea of evolution. What he's given, correct me, credit for, it should be discredited, is the idea of natural selection. Let me repeat, it's a subtractive process. Think about mathematics. You can't get the additive from the subtractive. Natural selection doesn't work. All it does is use the genetic a pool, shall we say, inside of an individual, and there is a, with some species, it's a little bit more broad than others. Cheetahs, well, apparently, it it does, are very is wide. It, it's a temporary kind of, um, it's a temporary kind of selection. So it's according mm -hmm. to the environment or something, then some genes are expressed, and those genes, the ones, the lives that express those genes will then flourish and the other ones will according to the environment at the time or whatever but that's the thing about that's the beauty it doesn't of, change the genetic it, no it doesn't change it mm. but that's the that was interesting do you want my straw that would be appreciated go for it but i don't know if i want to do that it might do the full vault out of here container too <laughs> i don't know but um no, what I was going to say is that's the beauty of life, is that there's so many, um, there's so many possibilities. That's right. There's a lot of expression with what we've got here. Right. Then you get mutation, and it changes the game around. Mm -hmm. So, uh, well, this guy was just having problems wrapping his head around. No, no, Darwin can't be wrong. He just couldn't wrap his head around this concept. He's being very nice, very patient. I'm still impatient with him. I was being impatient with him. But anyway, so uh, where it gets really, really la di da is with uh, nuclear physics, quantum physics, uh, relativity, and astrophysics. These disciplines, I should say, lack of disciplines, are stunning. It's just ast astronomy. They're detecting stuff from outer space. And holy smoke. Oops, that one I really missed. You know, all of a sudden, you know, like we look at the way galaxies are going, you know, circling around and the stuff on the outside is going around too fast for gravitational theory. Dudes, gravitational theory was laid down before 1727. That's when Isaac Newton died. And I suspect he did most of the work on that when he was Sticky. off in the countryside during the plague of London. Should I think I that was 1665. No, no, I'm going to eat that separate. Yeah? Okay. Anyway, so, but we'll say 1727. Just, uh, you know, I don't like, you know, like, it, you know, it. 1665 might be too early, so I'm just going to go with the, the latest date. Okay. It's been around a long time. Yeah. Look for something new. 
it's almost 300 years since Isaac Newton died. I might even live to see the um, tricentenary of his uh, death. 300 years. Like, get with the program. So when you're seeing these galaxies spinning around too fast for that kind of theory, start looking for something else, will ya? So many of you guys at universities, and here in Canada, public universities, there's some public universities in the United States that are considered world-class, Berkeley, whatever, and uh, get with the program. There are other forces in nature. Faraday came after uh, Newton. He was doing work over a hundred years, I think. We'll say about a hundred years after Newton died. And he was working with electromagnetism. You think you could do something with that, guys? Just try it out for a change. You know, that's 200 years old. The, the, uh, less than 200. Let's say 150, okay? You know, like, start doing a little work with that, okay, guys? Can you do that? Or is that too much that? Instead, hey, we've got dark energy and dark matter. That's what's called ad hoc explanations, okay? Don't do that. When you get paradoxes like that, the paradoxes are telling you, you are wrong! And you are. There will be other explanations for it. Now, people have this disrespect for science, and it's your scientist's fault. You're doing, biologists are taking money from food companies, from medical companies, from medicine, pharmaceutical companies, I should say, from fertilizer companies and all this kind of stuff. And, you know, like, I'm not doing an ad hominem here because you can see the results of yeah. their stuff. Yeah. It's not, hey, you know, I'm suspicious because of this connection. You can see the stuff that they're doing. Yeah. It's, hey, Hoxt is the highest. That's what it means in German, I think. Hoxt. You've seen that. Hoxt. How do people say it here? Over here. It's a fertilizer company or but something? But there's also, um, and we've talked about economics. And the mm -hmm. That connection with, uh, connection with, industry. with uh, corporations okay. of yeah. all descriptions and size. And, um, and then... The university system in general is connected to government. Well, that's an interesting connection. Yeah. There's a guy called Jay Lerner, uh, and uh, thanks for the book, Jay Lerner. Uh, the Big Bang never happened. You're right, but for the wrong reason. And uh, I, as I understand you and Alfin and uh, other uh, people who followed Alfin, we're just living in a part of the universe, an endless universe, I gather, from reading that book. Gone through it twice, but. Uh, I just didn't look at the covers in there, so. But uh, we live in a part of the universe where, where things... I never should have told you about that. Okay. Does you don't that, hear you me. You do feel bad about it because you say it. What was that? You feel bad about it. I shouldn't have told you about the comment. I don't feel bad. Okay. okay. I will keep on mentioning because there are pe people who should understand where these people are coming from. They're trolls and they are 